my fellow comic book collectors. Today is Wednesday, and on Wednesdays I answer your questions. And last week, a bunch of people wrote me a whole bunch of questions, <laughs> so I'm going to answer those questions this week and try to do my best to show you some cool stuff while answering those questions. Um, we're going to start out with uh, A Super Tramp. Awesome video again. Thanks so much for sharing your best Batman books. I really appreciate you responding to my question, Detective Comics for next week. So basically he was asking me to show some of my best Batman books. Well, I kept it to actually like, like I was very literal in interpretation of that. I showed my Batman titled books. Well, this week he wants me to show my Detective Comics. Um, actually, I have more than what I'm showing. I'm showing only my slabbed ones. So I, I don't actually have that many slabbed detective comics, but I have some cool ones. So it's worth seeing, seeing regardless. Um, so we're going to start out with this book. We're going to work our way down. So the first one is uh, Detective Comics. Uh, what number is it? 608. Okay. I believe this is the first appearance of Anarchy. Yeah. So kind of a cool book. Nice anarchy symbol right there. The guy down at the bottom. So that's, I don't know, kind of a cool book. And then we got... This is one I really like. I actually really like this one. Uh, this is Detective Comics 475. This is actually... I don't even know if it says it. No, it doesn't even say it. This is actually the first appearance of Joker's uh, iconic, uh, like, uh, like, gunfish. <laughs> I, I just thought it was so cool. I had to get this one just for that reason. And the story in it is quite funny. So uh, he actually tries to get the patent for these <laughs> these clownfish kind of things. These joker fish, actually, they're called. Um, and then um, he kills all the patent people because they won't they won't give him his patent. <laughs> it's just kind of funny. So uh, yeah, just a really kind of cool book. Uh, this is Detective Comics 475. Yeah. Okay. And then we got another great one. This is. I just want to make sure. Yeah, Neil Adams cover, and this is, uh, I believe, the first appearance of the League of Assassins. Yep. And this is uh, Batman Detective Comics number four oh five. Nice. Kind of looks like zombies or something. <laughs> like they look like zombies, but they're assassins. <laughs> I don't know, it kind of reminds me of zombies, you know, that Moon Knight thing. But it's actually, yeah, they're assassins and they're after Batman. So it's kind of cool. So this is uh, Batman 405. And then we got another great Batman character. This one I have a signed copy from Neil Adams. Uh, this is um, Detective Comics 400. And this is the first appearance of Man Bat. I'm just trying to find the signature. I think the signature is on the inside. Signed by Neil Adams on blah, blah, blah. Where does it show the signature? I'm just, oh yeah, right here. <laughs> I couldn't find the signature. I was like, right there. Neil Adams signature. Isn't that kind of cool? So uh, this is Batman Detective Comics 400. And then this is actually a, a really under the radar book that it should be more expensive than it is, but it's it's kind of like one of those under the radar ones. Um, this is Detective Comics uh, 373, and this is the first time that they refer to Doctor uh, Mister Freeze as Mister Freeze. Uh, before he was known as a Zero, like uh, Mister Mister Zero, uh, but in this they they change his name to Mister Freeze. It's a kind of cool book. So first appearance, kind of, of Mr. Freeze. I know it's kind of weird, but yeah. So this is the, kind of an interesting, interesting book. So um, this is Batman Detective Comics um, 373. And I'm just, I'm just trying to read. It doesn't say anything other cool. It doesn't actually mention that even on the slab, which is kind of sad. Okay, but that's the cool thing about that book. This next book is a really cool one as well. Like, I kind of like this cover. I don't know why. I just think it's cool. It's uh, where Batman is going to reveal himself to Batwoman. And this is actually a, the second appearance of... Oh, sorry, Batgirl, I should say. Uh, this is the second appearance of Batgirl. So kind of a 
you know, kind of a key. And I just like the cover. I like any back row kind of covers. So um, I thought this was kind of nice. So uh, Detective Comics 363. And then we get the first appearance of Batgirl. <laughs> so this is uh, Batman Detective Comics 359. And I like this one. It, it, this and the first appearance of Poison Ivy, I, I like both covers because it, you got that, the character being sort of introduced right on the front cover. And it's kind of like, you know, shows them and like, who is this girl kind of thing. You know, like, you know, it's kind of cool. So, um, so this is the first appearance of Batgirl. So kind of cool. 359. And next one is another great first appearance. This is the first appearance of Mar Martian Manhunter. So this is uh, Detective Comics uh, 225. And uh, yeah, you got a whole bunch of Batman too. <laughs> so it's kind of cool. So this is um, origin and first appearance of Martian Manhunter. Kind of cool. So that's Detective Comics 225. And last but not least, oh, I actually kind of missed the order up. Um, I realize that now. Um, this is Detective Comics 233, which is a little bit later, <laughs> not much, but uh, it, this is the first appearance of Batwoman. So uh, kind of a cool book as well. And this is uh, Katie Keene, a uh, Kathy Keene, Kathy, yeah, Kathy Kane. <laughs> what am I saying, Kathy Keene? I mean, like mixing, mixing up. Uh, Katie Keene, which is a good girl art, art character, with <laughs> with Kathy Kane. So kind of funny, but it's just a really great. I like this cover actually, um, because you got her on the you know the uh, Bat motorbike, and uh, you got the Batman and Robin in the Batmobile. They look really squished in the Batmobile. I think it's kind of funny, um, but this is kind of like very telling. This is one of those few covers where it actually kind of really relates to what's inside the story. Um, because what's happening is in this story, she basically is solving the crime before they get a chance to. So she's always just a little bit ahead of them. And it's kind of annoying to Batman and Robin because <laughs> she's doing all their work for them. So uh, just kind of a funny story. Uh, this is a Detective Comics 233. First appearance of Batwoman. And that is my uh, my slabs of uh, Detective Comics. And um, I have a few more. Um, like, I have a pretty good Detective Comics run, but uh, it's all raw. It's mostly raw comics. And they're in a box that I can't access. <laughs> so <laughs> I can't show them. Uh, one sec here. I'm trying to find the paper so I can answer. Oh, of course, I put things on top of it. Um, so the next question comes from... Cody Warner, a great video as always. Are you planning on moving your collection to, how are you planning on moving your collection to your new house? Do you trust the movers to carry your comics? Okay, so what's happening is, this is kind of a weird situation. I'm gonna explain my move situation because it's very painful. Like painful is not even a good way <laughs> to describe it because that's too, too, too gentle. It's, this is gonna be one of the most painful experiences in my life because I have to, I'm buying the house literally tomorrow. When you watch this video, tomorrow I'm buying a house. And I'm gonna be really, really poor. Like really, really poor because I have to get what's called a bridge loan because I haven't sold my current house yet. My current house sells in February. So I'm gonna be in between, like, but like I'm gonna have two houses at the same time. So I'm gonna have to get this massive loan <laughs> to buy this new house. And it's just going to be really painful. But because there is that time period between the two houses, um, I'm going to be able to uh, have multiple times where I can visit the house in Ottawa. That's where I'm moving to, uh, where I can move my stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the movers to move like my furniture and all that kind of stuff. But my comics, I'm going to try to move myself which might be even more painful than I expect because I'm looking around my room and there's a lot of stuff in here and I'm not sure how it's going to fit in my car. But that being said, I have, I, I know that I'm going there at least three times before, you know, during this kind of moving process, maybe four, maybe four times. I might go an extra time. And I'm thinking if I can get maybe 20 to 30 boxes per time into my car, then 
with three to four times, I can maybe bring all the stuff. Maybe. <laughs> I might maybe require an another fifth time or something or some friends to help me out or something. But uh, that's how I'm planning to move. I, I think it's just easier to move it myself. Uh, then I don't have to worry about things getting lost or stolen. Um, because last time I moved, even though I thought the movers were pretty good, I was missing some books. Um, my first appearance of Gambit was missing. My first appearance of Cable was missing. And a slew of other books that I knew were kind of key books were missing. So um, I don't know what happened to them. I don't know. You know, I can't really say. <laughs> but um, there were things that were missing that were kind of key books. And it kind of bothered me. So um, I don't want to have that happen again. So that's that's my plan. That's the way it's going to work. Um, so officially, I move into the new house January 10th is the official day. Um, but um, I'm going to be kind of in between the two houses during that time. And then my family actually is not even moving uh, from this location until they're meeting up with me later, <laughs> which is really crazy. Ah, it's just so much crazy stuff. And they're moving like at the end of June. So I'm going to be alone for like six months by myself. It's going to be kind of lonely and sad, but <laughs> I'll, I'll be working quite hard as I always do. So it should be okay. Okay. So that's enough random stuff about my crazy move, which is going to be painful. And it's just like totally on my mind right now. Okay. Um, next thing is a uh, black box silver and bronze asked Alan. Great show. Thanks for the spotlight on the King, which is Jack Kirby. Um, I'm quite curious to find out which Soti book you were mentioning. I don't know <laughs> which one which one I mentioned in the video, so I'm not sure. Um, are you familiar with uh, the Golden Age character, The Face? Yes, I am. Uh, I believe his alter ego is Tr Tony Trent. I'm having trouble nailing down info about him, but he reminds me of a character I like, Peter Trask of T-Man. If you know anything regarding this character's appearances in comics, can you share that? Please share as well, showing any comics you own where he makes an appearance. Thanks. Okay. I don't have any of the books that he made an appearance in, but his first appearance is in Big Shot Comics, number one. Um, which Big Shot Comics is actually a fairly affordable title. So a lot of his appearances are in Big Shot Comics. So you can kind of a lot of the earlier issues have him and it's like he'll be like one of those little people bubbles you know like that they always show on the covers um and usually it'll write the face on it so <laughs> uh, you can find his first appearances just looking through i would what i would recommend is go to my comic shop and just search big shot big shot and then um then you can see all the titles uh, like all this the issues and just go through and find all the ones with the face in it and they're as i said they're fairly affordable um now i'm going to tell just so people know a little bit more about the face uh the face is known as mr face uh originally created by uh, mart bailey uh the character was he created was more wore a really frightening like green mask with flame red hair and a uh, vampire, like these kind of weird vampire fangs. <laughs> it, was, it was kind of a, you know, these in these weird ghoulish eyes, yellow eyes. Uh, underneath the mask, though, was a deep blue. He, he, he like wore this kind of tuxedo, a uh, blue tuxedo, which gave him more class. So he's like sort of like horror plus classiness. It was kind of weird. Uh, his character, when not in costume, was named Tony Trent. Okay. The face was based off a... a Mr. Face, um, which is the character that we now know is, you know, the face, um, was kind of brought back. So he was a public domain character for a while, kind of, you know, nobody really had the ownership over him. So other companies could use him. <laughs> so what happened was uh, uh, he was originally published from Columbia Comics, but then uh, um, uh, Dynamite Comics picked him up. And they used him in Project Superheroes. So if you want to get Mr. Face, which is the current version of the face, uh, you can pick him up in Project Superpowers. So those are kind of the modern comics with the face in it. So kind of a cool, you know, opportunity to uh, read new face uh, stories. So that's all I could find about him. Okay, next question <laughs> is from Merton Bow. 
have you any uh, Hanna Barbera Sunday morning comic, or ca morning cartoon comics? Um, Marvel produced a 13 issues series called Laugh Olympics, which I recently got into and found it to be quite fun. Uh, I need three more issues to complete the run. I don't actually have any of the Laugh Olympics, but I do have uh, a few of the Hanna Barbera uh, wacky races. And I was actually going to pull them out and I forgot to pull them out. So, <laughs> um, but Wacky Races is kind of like Laugh Olympics. So those who are not familiar with Laugh Olympics, it was basically um, Hanna Barbera would have this kind of a Hanna Barbera special show that they would do on like Saturday mornings. I remember it as a kid. So these are my kid memories of Hanna Barbera. So uh, what they would do is they would have like like the different character groups like Scooby Doo and all the Scooby Doo gang. They would have like Yogi Bear and um, like, you know, like whatever the other, what's the little bear called? Babu? <laughs> no. um, uh, yeah, so those those guys as one group, they'd have like all the different groups like uh, Kung, Fu, Kung Fu Fui uh, as another group. And they would have all those groups competing with each other. And they would do these kind of weird Olympic events like, you know, just that didn't make any sense at all, but were kind of funny. And there would always be like the good guys and then the bad guys. And the bad guys would always try to sabotage all the, the good guys. And and then, you know, at the end, somebody would be declared the winner. So it was kind of a fun, kind of a crazy show. Um, there was a similar show with on uh, Hanna-Barbera called Laugh Olymp and uh, not Laugh Olympics, Wacky Races, which is kind of similar in the fact that they were they would always do these kind of races where they would all be driving in their cra kind of crazy vehicles. And they would, um, you know, uh, do the same kind of, it was the same situation just in cars and driving rather than Olympics, which is, yeah. So, um, and I like that series as well. So I, I managed to get a few of the books for that uh, from the Wacky Races. And they, there, there's a few first appearances in there, like uh, Dynamo Dog and uh, a few other kind of characters, uh, like um, Monty Mutt, um, uh, just a bunch of first appearances in there. So, um, you know, I picked them up for that. So, um, <laughs> that, that is my, uh, knowledge of it. Um, recently though, uh, they did, uh, produce, um, a new version of Wacky Races. So something to look for. Uh, okay. Matt Bloggs wrote, have you got any issues of Dark Ho Horse Extra? Well, Dark Horse Extra, no, but for those people who are not familiar with Dark Horse, Dark Horse Extra, it's kind of like this. It's kind of like these newspapers. This is not Dark Horse Extra. Dark Horse Extra. Oof. Okay, um, but this is what they look like. They were kind of like a newspaper. They were always folded, and inside you would get like, you know, uh, upcoming, like, um, uh, books that were going to be published from Dark Horse and sometimes they would actually have like little like um, previews of what like the stories that would be inside those comics and uh, you can actually pick up the the issues of Dark Horse comics uh, Dark Horse <laughs> news uh, usually uh, Dark Horse Dark Horse Extra sorry I just keep on messing that up um, you can pick them up uh, from eBay uh, usually they go for anywhere from two to three dollars. They're pretty affordable. Uh, they're usually not in the greatest condition. Like they'd be in this kind of this level of condition because often they were folded. Getting one that isn't folded <laughs> is almost impossible. So um, yeah, that's Dark Horse Extra, which is kind of a it was kind of a cool publication. Usually given out for free at comic shops because people you know they're trying to promote uh, Dark Horse. But um, I don't think I saved any. Like, I, I, I think I even had a few back in the day, but um, haven't seen it. it they, they really came out in the late 90s, uh, and then they ran for, like, like, a fairly long time. I think over 50 issues. Um, so uh, let me, I'll read what I wrote as well about this. Dark Horse Extra was a series of monthly four-page comic anthologies released by Dark Horse Comics. Each comic contained four single-page stories relating to ongoing Dark Horse titles. The stories 
would usually be told over the course of several issues. So that was what I wrote. I wrote some extra just to have, it, have some extra little information there. Um, so that, believe it or not, were, I kind of went through it very quickly. Um, but those were the questions for this week. Um, if you guys have any questions that you want to ask me for next week, please do so in the comments below. And remember to uh, give this, com uh, this video a like comment and share <laughs> and please subscribe to the channel hit that bell notification so you don't miss any of my updates and um what i recommend is you share out this video because i'm trying to grow the channel and i need your help to help grow this channel so please share these videos and um let's build a comic community so thanks again bye for now